Hello and welcome to my bevy 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 migration guide. Cart was uh, lovely enough to provide us with this Easter gift of bevy 0 0.7. So I just figured I would make a quick migration guide and either later today or uh, in the coming week or so I'll make a like in-depth dive of what's new in bevy 0 0.7. So we'll just start with the migration guide simple like top to bottom because bevy at the moment is pr pretty good at not needing complex migration this is a little bit more than i think 0 0.5 to 6 was but that's because 0 0.5 to 6 was almost entirely find and replace things so we do start out with a find and replace query sets have been renamed to parameter sets and can now hold more than just queries which i don't think any well, it actually appears that the P and the Q changed. But outside of that, don't think there's any difference between a query set and a parameter set in terms of how you would have been using them. It's like entirely extended functionality. And because of that extension, they've been renamed to be more appropriate. You can now wrap uh, resources and uh, world, which, thank you. What a feature. Alias mutability. So this... This is an error you'll get when you try to create a query that has uh, like a, tr a transform and a transform, and you'll get a mutable uh, alias mutability error if they conflict. And there's a new uh, there's a new function on queries that lets you get multiple entities at a time, which if you gave it the same entity would cause an alias mutability conflict. Okay. Uh, Removed margins, I believe this is a bit of a find and replace because you're just replacing margins with rect. Like it really nothing more complicated than that, at least I don't believe. Which I'm assuming is just because they moved the margins logic out of the margin type and into the actual thing using the margin. So probably uh bevy UI. Remove face towards. Not entirely sure what this is about, but again. Another find and replace of the occurrences of face towards and replace it with look at rh. I'm not entirely sure why they decided to change that name. Uh, world dot entities mute is now unsafe, which requesting mutable access to the world tends to be unsafe without the other checks in place. Uh, I was reading, I think, in the update log that it's, it's to do with the fact that you can change how the entities are structured internally, which will then break other systems, not just where you're poking at it. You've got to be very careful. So now unsafe. Uh, custom vertex attributes, not entirely something I've looked into because I haven't done shaders, but I believe it just changes the shaders from being named attributes actually like as a struct that you now insert attribute and sort of like an ID and everything, which is used later in buffers instead of just being a name instead of just setting attribute to a name you now insert a custom attribute with a name i'm assuming this is a, a uuid and the vertex format that it is uh, then they they change the vertex the mesh vertex buffer layout to just be more compact so instead of having to state everything it i think it derives it by looking at what the types are and probably calculating some of these numbers instead of you having to manually specify them. Uh, removed the need for the into system for piping, which uh, again, I've not really looked into this yet. I would have to do a lot of research to work out, but it's more or less just UX like smooth of like you can just now put the system's name instead of having to do into system into system and then the system, it just automatically derives that. Uh, removed run system, but I believe it was just for like running a system without a world. I would would be my guess is you run a system and then uh, feed in all the parameters itself. So I'm assuming it's still underneath. It's just um, that it's it's like now a private function, it's a public that you can call. Replaced vsync. This is instead of just having vsync, there are now vsync. There's only when the window gets an update call. And only when the user puts an input into the window. Uh, like now different ways of controlling your frame rate. 
so that you can uh, make your apps more efficient. So like you can have like the UI not running every single frame. Instead, it only runs in frames where the user actually puts an input in. This should make uh, applications that aren't like video games much more responsive and power, can, uh, power saving because they won't be rendering and calculating lots of functions that aren't necessary to be done every frame. I changed the order of the VEC3 transform supplied, which is that in a transform, I believe in a traditional game engine, like it says here, is a scale rotation trans, uh, translation. And Bevy apparently didn't do it in that order. It's uh, not a front-facing change as most people wouldn't notice it unless they were specifically doing something to handle the error. Unless, like, unless you were specifically doing something to handle the wrong behavior, this won't make a difference. And it's saying, but it means that sprite bundles will behave as expected, rotating. Which I'm assuming is that it was probably doing um, translation and then rotation, which meant that if you moved a sprite off center, it would rotate not around its pivot point anymore, it moves and then rotates, result in it not working properly. It would move along the y axis and then rotate into the z axis. Was issue. Uh, this is a, one of the not copy replace changes that you would have to make is that they've replaced the uh, name of the camera being how you determine different cameras apart to now cameras use the uh, marker component. So you have a first person camera and or first pass camera. So instead of having a camera called first pass camera in the camera's name, the camera entity will have a fast pa first pass component attached to it, which just changes the logic of checking the name of the camera to uh, applying a width filter to your query for the camera, which much more efficient because you're not doing a string compare. And uh, to me, a lot more simple because you can have multiple cameras uh, without it getting too confusing because they've all got components. So I guess it would just be changing the name at the same time. It just, again, another nice simplifying thing. Instead of doing a check and a branch, it's just a query. Uh, next is removing the config API. I've been looking at this for ages. I, the first time recording this video, I spent like five minutes rambling on about what I think this is doing. I have no idea how this new config API works. It like legitimately feels backwards where they seem to have made it more complicated because it's doing all sorts of weird things outside of what I believe is a typo. Like it makes sense that you call dot config the parameters and then tell it what parameter has the default value. It intuitively makes sense. But then down here, you've got to make some kind of function that at no point takes a local. So, I don't know if it's some typos or something's missing or I'm just completely misunderstanding. The, I'll pin a comment explaining this if someone points it out or if there's an update that, that corrects something that's actually wrong here or if I ever work out what's going on. But it doesn't take a local value and implements into a resmute config, not a local config. Then we move val and then we set value zero equal to local. So that somewhat makes sense to me that what we're doing is taking this value and putting it into the config, which what throws me the most down here is when we call it, we provide it with a config 42, but there's no, how does it unwrap the config into that? It would make sense if it's saying it needs to be able to turn into a mutable function with that signature. And then here you'd said that it takes in a resmute u32 or even if it takes in a config some kind of way of taking in a value but it needs to be a function that can take in a mutable reference but where's the actual function that it's applying to that's what's confusing me it's, this obviously isn't our system because it doesn't take a local and it's just setting the variable every single time based on its input so I have no idea how this works, but hopefully someone can explain it to me and I can pin the top comment telling everyone what's going on. But anyway, back to the rest of the video. Oh, right. Cameras now point at render targets rather than windows. This 
I don't think really changes much. It literally, instead of saying window and then window ID, you have to find and replace that, which would be hard because of the fact that your window ID um, wouldn't be called window ID, unlikely, but it's basically find and replace with render target window ID because you can now in win uh, cameras can now point to textures at not just windows for their rendering which will allow mirrors so you can have a camera pointing out of the mirror and then rendering what that camera sees so yep it's nice feature uh low level at the moment but they've said that in the next update there should be more high level stations uh into resource this is another feature that i'm so glad that they've added because you don't realize how important this kind of thing is until you go to use it and it not really a thing like but it just lets you uh, init resources with their from world instructor as opposed to just having only the default value available inside a system so using the command struct you can now init a resource and insert that into your world which just gives it world access so it can build its uh, infallible resource getters another one of those just reduces the number of words you need to type because you one don't have to put the get at the beginning but it also will return uh, it will panic instead of returning an option if the resource uh, doesn't exist. And so you don't need the dot .unwrap at the end. It's a good way of if you know the resource exists. Don't know why that wasn't there from the beginning. Probably because I wasn't realized how important it is to have resources. Like to, to have known resources. It was always a getter. Uh, event handlers. Uh, I no longer ex re-exported from the Bevy app, which... Uh, it doesn't really make any change. Again, it's a find and replace place line with this line. It makes no difference. I'm assuming it was shouldn't have those on by default, so they've been moved from being re-exported there to re-exported from the actual crate that they're in, just so that you don't have to compile the um, yes when you're using the app. I'm not entirely sure. But that is really everything you need to do in order to update bevy to 0 0.7 it's another simple update that doesn't require very much more i'm assuming these um migration guides will get more complicated as bevy gets more large and it stops being simply renaming a to b and actually has syntactical changes but most of these functions really are just we rename this thing because the name no longer fits or we change this thing to being a different thing like uh, attribute customizing would probably take a bit of effort to change, but it wouldn't be much more complex than making the custom attribute static somewhere, because again, it's, it's subconst. So putting that at the top of your file or wherever you're using, and then finding and replacing the name with the capitalized version of itself. Like uh, I, maybe some of these other ones that I don't quite understand what they're doing would be more complicated, but it really does seem like you would just have to find your vertex buffer layouts and replace them with the simplified form. I don't even know if the old version is broken. Like, it may still work. It's just that it could be done using the from to be more efficient, easier to read. So some of these don't seem like breaking changes. But I, again, I haven't really dug deep into actually full-fledged game development and hit a point where I needed to write shaders. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and there will be a longer video of me going through all the updates of 1.7 and basically just going thank you cart for the uh, great Easter gift. But that's another video. So like, comment, subscribe.